Hello, this is Spartan Commander, and this is the 714th Rome Total War Brotherhood game that I've put onto YouTube. You might have noticed um, that I've been putting on a few older battles in the last few battles that I've put on, and that's because some of our viewers have asked if I've got any older battles to put on. Uh, very often, I think the last battle I put on was about 14 months um, ago. Well, this is the oldest battle I've put on for a long time. This battle was fought back in June... 2021 so this battle was fought approximately 18 months ago um, also in this battle you're going to see me taking the Macedon faction which is very very rare it might be the first time I've ever put a battle on with me taking the Macedon faction so okay you can see it's fought on my favorite map the Germanic forest map as we've talked about on many occasions you've got the big open plains or you've got the woods where you can hide your troops and plan those nasty ambushes and of course if you bring a barbarian faction then you've got the winter bonus and the woods bonus as well so I think this map's got a lot going for it and that's why I like this map quite a lot as you a lot of you will know okay our first teammate is brother member Pompey now Pompey's got 14 infantry four cavalry and two archers okay 14 cavalry uh, sorry 14 infantry four cavalry two archers quick look at his um, upgrades on his cavalry so he's got eight upgrades two experience stripes gold shield gold attack so I think that would be a tried and tested Pompey army there. Okay, our next teammate is um, Brotherhood member Uther. Now Uther has got uh, the bog standard 31k Roman army of 14 infantry and 6 cavalry. And the reason that's a bog standard old 31k Roman army is because it's so effective and so efficient. Our next teammate is Brotherhood member Schemer or 8-Ball. And he has got 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Okay, 13 infantry and 6 cavalry. Um, I'd just like to show you something here that um, for his morale of his troops here, you'll see that he's got an eagle unit. Okay, remember that gives morale and he's got his infantry general as well. So he's got a lot of infantry, uh, sorry, a lot of morale going on within his infantry. And our last teammate is myself, Spartan Commander, who has very, very unusually bought the Macedon faction. I can't remember putting a battle on with me having um, the Macedon f uh, faction. I don't know if any of you can remember that. I can't remember this. So this may well be a first here with me putting um, this battle on with me being um, in the Macedon faction. We're going to have a look at this army and battle formation a little bit later on. So there's our team. Should be a great battle. Okay, at this stage of the battle, I thought we'd have a look at my old-fashioned, old-school um, Macedonian army and battle formation here. Can you notice here how this old-fashioned battle formation is wide, but it hasn't got much depth? As I say, I was using this army and this battle formation maybe 16 or 17 years ago. So this was used right back in the early days of Rome Total War. And as you can see, it's very out of date. You know, most people bring, like, they, they spread their spear and pike um, faction armies out don't they you know where with three mini armies or they've got an in-depth um battle formation there where they might have two pike units at the front and then their units go back in depth well this is a, a really old school old-fashioned and probably out of date battle formation here you can see i've got two pilot shield units at the front and if you notice there you'll see i've got seven upgrades on the pilot shield units there an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack Okay, and that's both of those um, Polar Shield units there have got seven upgrades on. An experienced stripe gold shield gold attack. If we go back into the battle formation there, you'll see the rest of my pointmen have got eight upgrades on. And as I said in other battle videos, um, <clears throat> the Greek clan was the best clan with the pike and spear faction. And one of the old Greek clan members told me that eight upgrades on the royal pikemen of Macedon is the optimum upgrades. It's no good putting... Um, nine upgrades on because the money that you spend you it's not worth it for what you get but eight upgrades is the optimum um upgrades on the royal pikemen and that was from a greek clan member and as a lot of veterans will know the greeks were the best with the pike and spear factions on rome total war and that's when there were hundreds of players in the lobby so that just goes to show how good the greeks were with the pike and spear factions there so as i say that's an old-fashioned old school probably out of date battle formation there notice no cavalry in this army as i say this is an army i bought 16 you know 15 16 maybe 17 years ago and for some reason i didn't bring cavalry i just bought archers and these well upgraded pikemen so it'd be interesting to see if this ancient army can do any good on the 2021 battlefield and here is the other team. We have Brotherhood member Man 2. Now Man 2's got 10 infantry, 5 archers, 
and five cavalry quick look at the upgrades on his infantry and you'll see there he's got seven upgrades on his infantry an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack there so you can see uh, the vast majority of his infantry have got seven upgrades on plus if you notice here as well he's got an eagle unit okay plus an infantry general so not only has he got experience strokes on all his infantry he's got that extra morale bonus there of the eagle unit and infantry general so make no mistake this infantry is going to be tough that will be tough to kill he usually brings serious cavalry as well and there you are eight upgrades two experience stripes gold shield gold attack so make no mistake here this is a tough roman army there and that will be difficult to kill with the upgrades that he's got on them as well plus he's got those archers for good lot of firepower as well okay uh their next teammate is a brotherhood member barkyman who's got his faction of choice 13 infantry two slingers and five cavalry okay quick look at the upgrades on his um spearman there and you'll see that his sacred bass spearman have got seven upgrades on an experienced stripe gold shield gold attack and that's all the way through his battle formation there and of course he's got his slingers at the back oh no you can see his the rear um line of his battle formation have got eight upgrades on two experienced stripes gold shield gold attack so that whole rear line of that battle formation has got eight upgrades on okay quick look at his cavalry there he's just got gold shield gold attack on his cavalry because of course he spent all his money on his infantry there okay so remember that carthage is barking man's faction of choice and remember this battle was for 18 months ago okay their next teammate is greek clansman cleomenes now cleomenes has got 12 spartans seven archers and one fast moving cavalry unit now remember a lot we've talked about there the greek clans mission on rome total war was to be the best clan with a pike and spear faction and to this end they used to practice for hours and hours we used to see them going into battle then coming back out going straight in again coming back out straight in again until most players on rome total war believe that the greek clan was the best with the pike and spear faction and that's when there were hundreds of people in the lobby and loads and loads of clans as well so for the greek clan to be uh, classed as probably the best clan with the pike and spear faction i think that says a lot about them and whenever you see a greek clansman especially with greek cities with a greek cities faction you know you're in for a scrap there so it'll be interesting to see um, how Cleomenus uses that uh, formation during the course of the battle. Look how wide that battle formation of Cleomenus is. I mean, he's going to make the most of the uh, flexibility and maneuverability of those Spartans, I think. And it'll be interesting to see how well he does during the course of the battle. Okay, uh, their last teammate, if we can find him hiding in the woods here. Oh, there he is and that is brotherhood member lando now lando has got 12 infantry three cavalry and five archers okay 12 infantry three cavalry and five archers so uh, it'll be interesting to see how well lando uh, does with that particular army as i say um this is the oldest battle i put on for a long long time for about 18 months ago and i hope it's uh, a cracking battle that you're going to enjoy Okay, and just to add to the Greek clan history, did you know that you used to have to live in Greece to be part of the Greek clan when it first started? It makes sense, doesn't it? If it's a Greek clan, then you should have to live in Greece to be part of it. Of course, as time went by, they had to release, uh, sorry, relax that rule to expand their clan. But uh, when they first started, you used to have to live in Greece to be in the Greek clan. Some of you might not know that. So I just thought it was a little bit of um, interesting RTW history for you there. Okay, you'll see there that um, Schemer's moving forward here. Now, I wasn't sure if you watch Schemer's movement here, I wasn't sure whether when I watched the replay, whether this was an overrun glitch or whether he meant to be that aggressive. Now, can you see him running forward here? And that forward unit there going into the archers, I could understand that to disrupt the archers, but then did you see how it moved back? It kind of looked to me like that might have been an overrun glitch there especially charging towards spartans there i don't think schemer would um necessarily do that so uh, as i say when i watched the replay there I, I was wondering whether that might have been an overrun glitch there i don't know what you guys think watching this it may well have been because i noticed that he's going to try and pull back a bit now that so it looks to me like he as i say that may well have been an overrun glitch there Okay, over on the right flank there, you'll see Uther running his Scipio army forward as well, being very aggressive there. 
and as I say you've got um, a lot of firepower there with the Greek cities um, archers there those elite uh, Cretan archers and as I say here you can see Schemer moving his army back away from the Spartans there so that's why I wondered you know when you saw him charging forward there that seemed to be a bit reckless for Schemer charging into Spartans there with his uh, Roman army so I'm pretty sure that probably was um, an overrun glitch there but you can see now that Cleomenes is really charging those Spartans into Schemer's um, infantry there and um, there you are, you can see Lando bringing his three cavalry units over there as well, maybe to help uh, Cleomenes against um, Schemer's uh, infantry there. There you can see Lando charging his cavalry and being his usual aggressive self, like a bang as he charges in there. But you can see that uh, Schemer is going to counterattack with his cavalry as well. But you can see several of Schemer's units have already been routed there with a combination of Greek cities and that hit by the SBQR cavalry. Over here on our right flank here and right centre, you'll see that uh, Pomp has moved over. Do you remember he was on the right flank? He's moved over to the centre there, combining with Uther Scipio army. And they may well be looking to go into the rear of the Spartans there. Can you see if the Spartans attack our uh, Scipio ally on that flank, then our allies could well go into the rear and into the flank of those Spartans there. So uh, make no mistake, Pompey and Uther, very old, wily RTW generals would have spotted that. Here you can see Mantu's army. He may well try and hit Uther's army in the flank. Plus, you've got the Carthaginians. Now, I'm guessing that um, Barclay Man probably won't want to take on Rome if he can possibly help it. Because he doesn't want to get piloted, uh, seriously piloted there, which he would do by Rome. But he would like to go for my uh, Macedonians, I'm thinking there okay but as you can see here i'm moving my macedonians over here to help my ally against the greek cities but look at the length of my macedonian pikes against the short spears of the spartans there so spartans will be quite reluctant to take macedonians on head on because they know the casualties they would suffer as they tried to fight down those long pikes to kill the man on the other end as I say, this could be the first time I've ever put a battle on where I'm in charge of Macedon. I can't remember another battle that I've done that. So, um, as you see, you'll, you'll probably see I'm a little bit amateurish with it. But um, we just have to see there how well um, or how not well that I do with my Macedonians there. Okay, you can see um, Pomp has moved his Brutii army over close to my Macedonians there. And you can see Uther taking his Scipii army over to our left flank from the right there. Okay, let's pause the game. Right, you can see here that Cleomenes is really pushing in with his Spartans against poor old um, Schemer's um, <coughs> Scipii army. You can see Uther bringing his army over here, maybe to crash into the rear of those engaged Spartans. And also Pompey could use his Brutio army to go into the rear of those Spartans as well. At the moment, my Macedonians are just holding firm. I'm just keeping them in defense mode at this time um, of the battle here, at this stage of the battle. Right, you can see that um, Lando's brought his SBQR army out of the woods and is heading towards our ally on the left flank, Schemer. As I say, I think Schemer's held quite well there against the uh, the Spartans there. And as I say, if that was an overrun glitch that he had at the beginning of the battle there, he did lose a few of his infantry units there. But uh, it looks to me like he's going to try and hold our left flank there against the army of uh, Lando's SBQR Roman troops there and the Greek cities there maybe as well. But as I say, my Macedonian army is just in defense mode at the moment. Pause again for a second here, but there's a danger moving around to the left flank there. Okay, make no mistake here, I think Barclay Man has bought this Carthage army to counter my Macedonians. Remember that the Carthage Sacred Band units punch above their weight when it comes to the 121 man units, pike units here. And Barclay Man will know that, and he'll want to engage my Macedonians with his Carthage Sacred Band if he can. But over here, as I say, you can see on our left flank here, um, Lando's bought his SBQR army around the left flank here, along with some Spartan units to attack maybe the left flank of my Macedonian units there. So what I need to do now, I need to change the, um, the direction of my Macedonians there to face this main threat coming in from my left flank there. Okay, so that's what I need to do. Need to um, move that battle formation there to face the main threat coming in on me. Over here, you'll see uh, Uther left four of his units there to try and slow down or counter Mantu's Julia army there as he takes the rest of his army over to the left flank. Over here, though, I'd like to draw your attention to 
um, Uther's um, Scipio um, cavalry there plus Pompey's cavalry there so they're keeping them back they're ready to charge in if Mantu engages look they can charge into the flank of his infantry there so um, that was a good position in there and you'll see that I've got my um, Cretan archers here targeting the uh, enemy archers as well so um, I think they've got slingers Arthur Carthage got slingers and uh, of course Cleomenes has got his Cretan archers as well but as I say, I need, I think, to change the direction that, that where who I'm facing there with my Macedonian um, formation, because otherwise I'm going to get flanked, especially by that uh, SBQR army coming in there on the left flank there, as you can see. And you can see the Carthaginians moving over to the left as well. As I say, make no mistake, Barclay Man will want to go for my Macedonians with his sacred band units there, as he knows that, uh, as I said earlier, those sacred band units will uh, cause a lot of problems for the big 121 man units right here are, you can see I'm now moving my Macedonian battle formation to face the main threat coming in on the left flank there okay so you can see there I've moved that round just pause the game for a second here so as I said there that's the main threat coming in on me there so I've now turned my battle formation to face that here you'll see schemer look I'm gonna hold this left flank there against um, Lando's infantry. Schemer's got his cavalry locked and loaded there as well. So it should be an interesting tussle there on the left flank between the two of them. Meanwhile, over on our right flank here, as I say, you can see that Uther has left some of his units there. You'll see Mantu is now taking his army over to our left flank there. Okay, so obviously it looks to me like their uh, main attack may well be coming on our left flank. Here you can see Cleomenus attacking our uh, Roman allies there. Okay, now you'll see a couple of Spartan units just in front of my battle formation there. Okay, now what I'm thinking about doing is advancing with my pikemen and maybe taking those two Spartan units out just by sheer weight of number of uh, my uh, Macedonians moving forward there. Right, can you see I'm now moving forward there. I'm looking to take out those two Spartan units that are just in front of my battle formation there just by sheer weight of numbers there. Right, and you can see I've taken one of them out there, and the other one I think will be cracking pretty soon there with so many Macedonians pressing in on them. Over here on our left flank, as I say, you can see Schemer trying to hold our left flank against Lando's SBQR infantry, and you can see the Carthage um, a general bringing over some of his spearmen as well, plus there's some Carthage slingers shooting into... Um, schemer over here on our right flank here you'll see Uther moving those infantry units back away from Mantu's Julio army and you'll see that um, Pompey's taking some of his uh, Brutio infantry over to the left as well and don't forget you've got Uther's cavalry here probably ready to charge in to Mantu's infantry if he gets a chance or he may well go for the enemy archers there as well because they've been a nuisance to us all the way through the battle okay but over here on our left flank this is a place to watch this could prove pivotal to the outcome of the battle whoever wins on this left flank okay you can see schemer under a heck of a lot of pressure he's charging his cavalry into the SBQR infantry line and bang as he smashes in there but look at the enemy Julio cavalry counter-attacking remember man two's cavalry's got eight upgrades on two experience stripes gold shield gold attack so let's say this left flank of ours um, whoever wins on there maybe this could be a decisive part of the battlefield we we'll just have to watch that okay so over on our right flank here you'll see the Uther's charging now Uther's either gonna go for the archers there I think or he's gonna smash into the rear of a uh, man to Julia army we just have to see which he's going to do there okay so you can see him running forward there with his Scipio cavalry and bang can you see what unit he's going for there he's going for man general okay you see man general unit there at the back of his battle formation let's pause the game for a second so make no mistake here that's who he's going for Uther's going for man general that's the guy there that he wants to kill of course, as we've said in other battle videos, if he can kill Mantu's general, he takes away the morale bonus, a big morale bonus there from the enemy team. So that's why um, Uther's really pushing in there on that um, general unit of Mantu's there. Get ready for this. And bang! And he smashes in there. 
really smashing in there they're trying to take out look at the pressure he's putting on Mantu's general unit they're trying to kill that general but you can see that Barking Man's counter-attacking with his Sacred Band Cavalry and Cleomenus is moving a couple of his Spartan units in there as well to counter Uther's Cavalry best thing for Uther to do is pull back or he's going to lose a lot of his Cavalry there I think right let's just uh, pause again for a second there right okay so you could see what Uther was trying to do there take out uh, Mantu's general but he's um, had several of his cavalry units routed they may well rally but um, as I say there he has lost um, a bit of cavalry they're trying to do that now over here you'll see that Pompey is hoovering up the enemy archers and missile troops so I'm thinking that Pompey's probably going to get some good kills from this battle here because he's taken out a lot of enemy missile troops there which is doing this a uh, pretty good favor there because they've been shooting into us for a long time in this battle you'll see that the Carthaginian general there is moving his sacred band units forward towards my Macedonians okay but over here on our left flank as I say you can see the pressure that schemers under from the enemy SBQR troops plus the enemy Julii cavalry as well okay so as I say our left flank here is under a lot of pressure look at that SBQR infantry really pushing on to schemer and now that Julii cavalry is coming in like a bang and it charges in you can see schemer counter-attacking with his Scipioi cavalry and bang as he charges in there just look at the scrap that schemer's putting up here to hold this left flank for us here just look at that cavalry he threw in there but unfortunately can you see there that um, the enemy have got a unit in behind his infantry there that was a nice move there by lando can you see that infantry unit that got in behind lando bought it round the flank there and charged it in the rear and it looks like our left flank is in danger of being completely broken there remember the enemy are the SBQR and Julio troops here and it looks like our left flank could be broken and all those enemy troops could smash into the flank of my Macedonians there okay so as I say maybe the left flank could prove pivotal you've got the uh, Carthaginians moving towards my uh, Macedonians here but what I'd like to show you is a great bit of teamwork here by Pompey Pompey knows the danger that Carthage can do to my um, Macedonians here so both Pompey and Schemer have put Roman troops in front of my Macedonians to take this sting out of the attack of the Carthaginians on my Macedon uh, Macedonians there so that's a nice bit of um, teamwork there by both Pompey and Schemer taking the sting out of those Carthaginian uh, attacks on my Macedonian pikemen there over here you'll see that Pompey's Brutio army there is ready to attack um, Mantu's Julia army there you've got some Greek city units in there as well that probably will be attacking and there's a um, Mantu's eagle unit there keeping out of the fray at the moment look but still being able to give morale bonus to um, their troops you can see that Barkley man's cavalry here uh, is attacking one of Uther's infantry units there you can see you've got the Carthage general there as well trying to take out this unit of um, Uther's there and then they may well get in behind us there to attack our archers imagine if they take it on a wide loop around there look and then smash into the back of our archers I've got all my archers there as well so that's something that maybe um, Barclay man might well be looking at but over here the main concern for us is our left flank looks like it is going to break imminently here you can see that now if I was schemer I'd move my general away from that battle situation there keep your general safe you can give um, morale to the rest of the team there get your general out of the battle situation there which is what he's doing let you can see the situation is untenable there on our left flank and he is now moving his general away from that situation that's a really good move there and here comes that Julio cavalry just to finish off the last of schemers infantry there like and bang as he charges in there okay so bad news for us after a massive scrap here by schemer our left flank has now been broken okay you can see our left flank has now been broken and there's the last of schemer's infantry there have just been routed so all these enemy troops now including Carthage sacred band units now can pile into the flank of my macedonian units there and try and roll me up from left to right okay so it's very very dangerous here on the left flank and if the Carthaginians start putting in a massive attack as well then I think that uh, my Macedonians here, we know have got poor morale, could well rout there. Okay, you've got uh, Uther's cavalry there locked and loaded, ready to charge into the um, enemy troops if he gets a chance there. So that's a good positioning of his cavalry there to help. But uh, if you notice, can you see Lando's troops are very tired 
or tired. So remember when troops are very tired or tired, their morale is low and their battle proficiency is very low as well. So it'll be interesting to see what happens on that left flank of ours. But over here on the right flank, you will see that there's Spartan units and enemy Julio units attacking the forward units of Pompey. My, as I say, my Macedonians are in defence mode at the moment. But uh, that could change, maybe. Uh, depends on what happens in the battle. Right, you can see there that um, Uther was going to charge his cavalry units in there, but then decided to back off. I think that was a good move there not to continue with that charge at that at this stage of the battle because I think there was a lot of enemy infantry plus some spear units there as well. He needs to bring infantry over, I think, to this left flank. Right, let's pause the game for a second here. So, if you notice here, I've turned a couple of my uh, Macedonian units to face a threat. If you notice, I've double banked the pike units there. What that means is I put one pike unit behind the other. That gives them both support there. And you can see that Uther is bringing over some infantry Plus, as I say, he's got his cavalry locked and loaded here to try and uh, shore up our left flank. Okay, so that's a good uh, tactical and team movement there by Uther. Very good battlefield awareness. As I say here, Pomp is doing well, holding Greek cities and Julio units that are really aggressively attacking him. You'll notice that Uther's also got some Scipio infantry over here as well on this right flank to help Pompey, maybe if he needs it. Okay, but he looks like uh, Uther is now moving his units over to the left flank. There goes that cavalry hit of Uther's and bang as he smashes in there with his cavalry. As I say, trying to retake the left flank that we've lost here. You can see Uther bringing more of his infantry over here to try and shore up, as I say, our left flank that has now been broken. And this is a nice hit here by Pompey's cavalry. Get ready for it. Look who he's going for. You can see who he's going for here. And bang as he charges in there. Routed the Julio General there. I thought the Julio General was a little bit exposed there. Did you think out the front of his um, infantry there? And Pompey saw that and struck with his infantry. Nice hit there with his ca uh, with his sorry with his uh, cavalry there. Nice hit there, and uh, took out um, routed the uh, the Julio General. Meanwhile, as I say, on our left here, you can see Uther's taking most of his infantry and his cavalry over to this left flank to. Um, as I say, to shore up our left flank and maybe even retake it from um, Lando's Scipio troops there. As I say, you can see the Carthaginians here pushing into my Macedonian units here, um, very aggressively there by um, Barclay Man. So there's a general overview of what's happening at this time in the battle. Okay, let's say my Macedonians here, you'll see that I've got a, um, a small amount of units, three or four units here, that I'm now going to start attacking here. Uh, to help my allies there. Can you see I'm moving them forward there to attack those Spartan units and the enemy Julio troops as well. There's a Carthaginian unit in as well. But you'll see I'm moving three of my units forward there to help my allies attack there. Okay. Usually with Macedon, as we know with Macedon, their defense, if you keep them in a defensive mode, they're very strong. Attack um, is, you've got to try and time the attack just right when you attack with Macedon, and I hope that I've timed the attack okay there. Over here on our left flank, look at this massive cavalry and infantry, bang, and bang as they've gone in there. So you've got all of Uther's troops over there now, uh, trying to retake our left flank. You can see, remember the Scipio troops are Uther, the enemy are the SBQR and Julio troops are. Now you've got Lando's archers here shooting loads of arrows into our allies' troops there okay but it looks to me like he's running out of infantry there looking at um the amount of infantry that uther's got as i say you can see here that uh, the carthaginians are gradually trying to put a bit of pressure on my um uh, macedonian pikemen there but as i say um pompey here putting those infantry units in front of my macedonians there are really taking the sting out of those carthaginians attacked the, the Carthage general, make no mistake, we want to make full contact with my Macedonian pikemen there, but uh, Pomp is stopping that with his uh, Roman infantry. As I say, if you notice here, I'm keeping my general at the back of the fray there, just keeping him at the back to protect him. As I say, we know Macedon morale is not very good, so um, to keeping the general alive is very, very important when you play with Macedon there. But uh, as I say, you can see there that I'm now attacking with, I think it's four of my pike units here uh, against that uh, Julio infantry there to help my allies out um, the best I can. Now over here, you'll see that the Sacred Band Cavalry of Barclay Mans here has been riding around hitting individual targets. Now it wouldn't surprise me if he got in behind us. And as I said before, smashing to the rear of our archers and missile troops there 
and take us out there so just keep an eye on that Carthage um, cavalry there, Sacred Band cavalry. Oh, that's good news for us. We've killed the Greek city's general. So that's uh, excellent news for us there. And as I say here, you can see my Macedonian, that small army of pikemen I'm moving forward into that Julia unit there. As I say, really, I just want to be a nuisance, really, with these um, pikemen there. I'm not expecting big things from them, but to just to try and be a bit of a nuisance there is what I want to do with the pike unit sir okay so over on our left flank here uh, it looks to me like um uther has retaken our left flank remember earlier we saw after a, a fantastic scrap by schemer our left flank was broken and uh, the enemy took our left flank but uther looks like he's regained it over here on our right flank here you'll see the uh, concerted effort there by Pompey really charging into the enemy troops he was defending for a long time and then attacked just at the right time there put loads of pressure on the enemy infantry and he's broken the enemy on our right flank as I say that small army of my uh, Macedonians there might have helped a little bit there but Pompey did really well there as we thought here you can see the Carthaginian sacred band cavalry getting in behind us here looking to take out our archers and uh, I just imagine you'll probably um you'll probably do that there because those um, sacred band units there, like if you notice, we haven't got any cavalry at this round here, round behind us here. So it looks like our archers are going to be a prime target for um, that sacred band cavalry of Barkleymans there. As you can see that uh, cavalry moving round there. Nice aggressive tactical hit there by a Barkleyman with his um, cavalry there. You could see the um, see our um, archers being rather exposed there, if you like. But as you can see here. Um, my Macedonians are still holding firm, but now a uh, Pompey can bring his Brutio troops over and uh, attack those Carthaginian units now, get in behind them and attack them there. You'll notice here I'm moving one of my units out to the flank of that one Carthage unit there to start attacking it from the flank. But I'm still keeping my main um, Macedonian army in defence mode. I'm not attacking. As I say, their strength is their defence mode from what I've, I've seen. Um, if you keep them in defense there, they can be very, very tough. The moment you start moving them, you've got to be very careful when you attack. Timing's everything. Right, here you can see Uther's a Scipio army attacking those um, sacred band units there. You can see Schema running his a general away from those sacred band units there. You can see sacred band units really pressing in on those two um, Macedonian units there that have been holding for a long time there. And you can see other Carthage units there pressing in on my... Um, Macedonians here, but this is a nice hit by Uther getting in behind those engaged sacred band units there, charging in their hammer and anvil attack. Look, my pikes being the anvil, his Scipio troops being the hammer there. You can see a lot of um you can see a lot of Carthage units starting to rout now. You can see um Pompey's Brutio infantry just starting to make inroads into the Carthaginians. Plus, as I say, you've got Uther's Scipio infantry there attacking as well and as you can see here I'm moving forward with that small little army of um, Macedonian pikemen that I used to attack earlier so there you can see um, it looks to me like uh, our team has managed to um, <coughs> to go on to uh, to win the battle here you see uh, Pompey bringing his Brutio infantry over now attacking that uh, enemy uh, Carthage army there and if you notice now can you see that I have now if you notice the main part of my Macedonian army was in defense now I'm turning it into attack can you see now I am now starting to attack the Carthaginians remember if you play with Macedon as I say um, their defense is very strong but when you decide to attack you've got to get the timing right and pick the target that you want to attack with there if you notice here I'm moving forward here towards these Carthaginian units as I say, I've been in defense mode for most of the game, but now I've decided it's time to attack. And you can see the long pikes of my Macedonians now making inroads into those Carthage units. But remember, as I say, those sacred band units, they do punch above their weight when it comes to fighting the big 121-man units. But uh, you can see here the sheer weight of number of my Macedonians now pushing into them, plus the enemy Scipio, uh, sorry, my ally Scipio troops hitting them in the rear as well. Uh, I sandwiched them there. And I think the Carthaginian general has just, um, oh no, I thought he just admitted defeat, but he hadn't there. Another one of their um, team has there. Right, you can see here, 
that the Cretan archers of Cleomenus now he's charged into this um, Scipio unit there you can see that um, he's alt attacked with his archers there you can see they are pull out their small swords now to attack this um, a Scipio unit of our ally there and you can see there Cleomenus are charging that uh, those couple of Cretan archers in there with their small swords to attack this um, Scipio unit of Uther's there but um, I think to be honest we've um, we have managed to go on to win the battle and anyway, Cleomenus has just admitted defeat there so um, <clears throat> as I say our team has just managed to go on to um, to win the battle there and you can see it's quite a spread out battle actually if we go right over to the right flank here you can see there just a little bit of skirmishing looks like it went on there and as we move across the battlefield a little bit more skirmishing here on this right flank of ours as you move along the battlefield here you can see where the more intense part of the fighting was I think this is where um, the enemy Julii troops were attacking there against our um, Brutii and Scipii troops there you can see that just by looking at the dead there you can see um, how intense the fighting was if we move across the battlefield here to say you can see there are a lot of red cloaked Spartans as we said in other battle videos in the snow you can see the red cloaked Spartan dead really uh, stick out don't they there and uh, as we move across the battlefield here and general still alive I'm glad to say keeping the morale up of the Macedonians and of course over here is where a schemer held that uh, that left flank so well for so long until he uh, got finally overwhelmed there and then Uther retook it there just to show you that I think Schemer has got one unit left and that's his general unit there you go uh, all the rest of the Scipio units are Uther's and that's the only unit that Schemer's got left there so uh, he kept his general alive good tactical move there newer players to Rome took the war even if the rest of your army is killed keep your general alive if you can because that's giving morale bonus to the rest of your allies there okay so as I say that uh, our team has managed to go on to win the battle and as I say the uh, I think that might be the first time I've ever put a battle on with me being in charge of Macedon okay first thing I'd like to say is really well played to everybody in the game there and as you can see it was an average victory there um, so um, I thought it might have been close but it's average the highest kills in the game goes to Brotherhood member Pompey 1725 kills there so well done to Pompey got some good kills there with his Brutia army if you notice he was all over the battlefield there supporting and hitting the enemy so well done to man too probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to there but he was kind of smashed and crashed on that right flank of ours wouldn't he um, there um, but he still did well I think he held well well done to Barclay man there did well with his Carthage army uh, good aggressive attacks there with his army well done to him well done to Cleomenus now if you look here you'll see that Cleomenus only got 30 kills less than Pompey can you see he just got 30 kills less than Pompey for the highest kills in the game so well done to Greek Cleomenus with his uh, Greek city's army and well done to Lando probably didn't get the kills that he wanted to either even though he was really aggressive on our left flank there um, but he did well so really well played guys um, that Macedonian 16 to 17 year old army in battle formation I suppose that's not too bad kills I don't know what you guys think um, I, I'm not too sure really I suppose it's okay there so let's say that's a, a what's that 15 16 year old army and battle formation there still didn't do too bad on the 2021 battlefield a well into schemer now he didn't get many kills there but that doesn't reflect the pivotal role that he had on that left flank holding as long as he did there um, really did help the team so as I say sometimes the kills that you see don't reflect the importance of what that player did during the course of the battle so well done to schemer on that left flank I thought he held really well and well done to Uther, if you notice he was supporting all over the battlefield there, really good battlefield awareness there, so well done to Uther, did really well, and as I say, well done to Pompey, highest kills in the game. So I just thought this was a, an interesting battle for you, as I say, I think it's the oldest battle I've put on for a long time now, this was fought back in June 2021, so it's 18 months old, and also I think it might be the only battle I've put on with me being in charge of Macedon, so I thought it was a double thing there, like, you know, and... Uh, I just wonder what you thought of my old battle formation and army there. It'd be interesting to see what you think in the comments. Hope you enjoyed this battle. Please give us a thumbs up if you did. And see you New Year's Eve. Bye for now.